Have your Bibles turn with me to the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew, if you would. 24th chapter of the book of Matthew. Let's all stand as we honor God's word by standing this morning. And I want to begin reading in verse 32. And I'm going to read to the end of the chapter, so bear with me. I'm having some problems with my eyes this morning. Bear with me. In Matthew 24, 32 says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its, when its branches is yet tender and put forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, there were, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not, not, not Noah now, uh, the, these, uh, these that were uh, marrying and these were the eating and drinking, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in, in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, who his Lord hath, hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is, is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, in, but, and, but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, then shall he weeping, then shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the day. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of it. Thank you, Lord, for those that have come out today. We pray for those that didn't come for some reason or another. Lord, we just pray that you'll go with them, watch over them, and as they all need to be in the house of the Lord, especially uh, as, as we see the days approaching that we, we just read about and we just just uh, learned about uh, just now. Lord, I pray that you'll see fit to bless us in all things, that you'll go with us, take care of us. Help us, Lord, to be the servants that we should be. Help us to be those that would uh, go, do the things that we should do for you. And, Lord, help us never to forget who, whose we are and, and never forget that he knows us from, from head to toe. Go with us and watch over us, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Th thank you. you. may be seated. <clears throat> I've titled this message this morning, Helpless Humanity. This is the reason that uh, I had one more to preach. 
uh, helpless humanity. Now, what does humanity take in? Takes in every one of us. Every one of us. It doesn't just take in a few here and a few. It takes in every one of us. You know, we, we are helpless, and may I say this, we are helpless to the goings on of what's going to take place in time to come. We're helpless as far as, you know, we can't stop it. We can't, we can't do enough to stop it because it's going to come just like the Lord was telling his disciples here. Ultimately, he was telling his church here that it's going to happen. It's going to come and they need to realize that they need to know that and be uh, doing what the Lord would have them to do. You know, don't get caught. The last two verses here tells us what it means to get caught not doing as we should do when the Lord comes back. Now, I'm going to say this, that I won't have time to preach this message uh, in its entirety this morning. I'm going to stop about a quarter till and let you go and eat since we're eating here at church today. I'm going to let you go and, uh, and then I'm going to pick up where I left off this afternoon. But you're going to find that this is a message that is probably a little weird to some people in the sense that uh, why would anybody talk about helpless humanity? Why, you know, we, we, we've talked about helpless uh, the, the lady that had the issue of blood for 38 years. We talked about the man that had laid at the pool for, I think, maybe 38 years. The man had laid at the pool and, and waiting on the movement of the water. And, and we, talked about, uh, we talked about those helpless people. We talked about the helpless centurion who could do, who could do nothing for his child. Uh, and we talked about a lot of helpless things this past summer which some are still here, and this will be the last message on helplessness, but we've talked about those things. But this one here does away with individuality. We're talking about humanity as a whole. Humanity as, as a whole. Whether you're lost or whether you're saved, we're talking about helpless humanity today. Now the fig tree has many things happen to it at different times of the year. You know, they, they would always judge the weather. They would judge the time of season and everything by the fig tree. And that's why Jesus told them, says, when you see the fig tree with leaves on it, then you know that, uh, uh, that summer is on its way. Summer is here. And so they, they judged it by those type of things. Now Christ tells his disciples that when they see certain things start to happen, then they will know the end time of the fig tree. When, when they watch it and they see certain things happen, he says you'll know that when the end time comes for that fig tree. And, and so understanding, thus he likens the last days as the ending of the fig tree. The last days here on earth. Some, some people say, well, you know, we've got legislators in Washington, D.C. are saying, well, we've got 12 more years. Ignorant. Say, we've got 12 more years. We've only got 12 more years to do something about uh, climate change. And that man is not going to be able to live on the earth after 12 more years. Well, I don't know how much longer it's going to be that these things are going to happen, but I do know they're going to happen. I know just as sure as you sit there today and just as sure as I stand here, these things are going to happen. He teaches his disciples that they will know the ending when they know the temple is destroyed, when, uh, when uh, the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. He says they will know that it is near even at the doors, verse 33. They'll know when they see these things begin to happen. He told them, he said, this, the temple is going to be destroyed. He said, he said that the, uh, uh, the walls are going to come down. The temple's going to be destroyed and, and, and that there's going to be destruction of Jerusalem itself. He says, when you see that happen, 
He says, he says, there's some of you that are living right today. Not today, not this day, but in that day. He said, you're going to see these things happen. They did. Some of them did 70 A.D. 70 A.D. is when the temple and Jerusalem was destroyed, was overrun in 70 A.D. Those, they were some of them living that day. He said, then, then, he said, when you see that happen, you know that the end is coming. Well, let me tell you something, folks. That was 2,000 years ago. What about today? What have I got to preach about today? What have I got to say today? If, if the Lord told them, there's some of you living, he says, you're going to see these things. But yet, what about, what is the Lord saying to us today, this generation? What is the Lord saying to them? What is the Lord saying to, uh, to us or about us? What, what is he saying? When, when he said 2,000 years ago, he said, when you see Jerusalem is destroyed, and, and he said, when you see that the temple is destroyed, then he said, you're going to know that the end is coming. Well, that's 2,000 years ago. How far along are we today? We're 2,000 years further along than they were. Than that his disciples were, were 2,000 years further along today. So what, what does the Lord think about this generation? What is the Lord warning this generation of right now? Right now, what's the Lord learning this generation of? He's sure not doing it through uh, AOC. He, he's not doing it through legislators up there in Washington. What is, what is he telling us? Let me tell you, folks. He's going to do what he's going to do in his time, and we cannot stop it. We're haphazard people today. This generation is so haphazard, we're going to talk about that just a little later. But this is a haphazard generation. This is a generation just up and does what they want to do. They don't care. They don't care if there's something, something good here, then they're going to go do it. If there's something good there, they're going to go do it. If there's something here or there, and they don't see anything wrong with it. They, they don't see a thing wrong with it today. But what's he saying to this generation? Well, you know, we're helpless. We're helpless today. You know, when, when we think that we can do as we please, whatever we want to do, and everything will be okay as long as my mama knows I'm a Christian, as long as my daddy knows I'm a Christian, as long as my aunts and uncles know I'm a Christian, as long as my brothers and sisters know I'm a Christian, I can just do whatever I want to do because they're going to take up for me. They're not going to say anything to me. It's, it's amazing to me that how some people will be so secret and so quiet about something that they heard the same time this preacher heard it but they won't say it. Let me tell you, folks, this is the generation in which we live today. Generation in which we live today. One thing we need to know, what is compared to the thousands, thousands of years before this time, that it was, that it was time to start looking for the ending of all things. Though we know it, though we know it, but it was many years in the future. Though they knew it, it was many years in the future. Lord knew that it was going to be many years in the future, but he told them, you start looking now. Well, what is it the scoffer said? The scoffer says, things just go on as they are. In the book of Peter, he says, scoffers say things just go on as they are. Why should I be looking for the coming of the Lord when things just go on as they are? Let me tell you, folks, he's going to sneak up on you. It's going to be like he sneaks up on you. You know, like I tell, I tell everybody, you need, I walk in this building. Every day I walk in this building, I make sure that I'm the only one in here. Because you don't know, I walked in this building one time, and, and I went in my study, and I heard somebody run down the, the stairwell, going upstairs, run down the stairwell and run out the door. And I jumped up and run. I didn't see who it was. Somebody had been upstairs sleeping. 
I went upstairs there and the bed was messed up. Let me tell you something, folks. You never know. You got to be careful around. You never know when something's going to happen. That's what the Lord is telling us as far as spiritual things are concerned. He says we need to always be on the watch. We, all, we need to always be doing what, what we should do. Now I want to say this. If the Lord's church was warned of these days some 2,000 years ago, then we must know it is very close to us or for us. He further goes on to say, but as the days of Noah were, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be, he, I be, as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking. You know, you know what we call that? We call that partying. That's what we call that. You say it's natural for somebody to eat and drink. No, he's talking about partying. You know, one of the great parties we find in the Bible was old, old Nero, old, old uh, uh, I can't remember his name now, put it on. He put it on when his, when his, when his daughter, and when his, when his stepdaughter danced naked in front of him. And she did it to entice him, to entice him to go and kill a Baptist preacher. And he did just that. After that party was over with, they brought the head of John the Baptist in there on a, on a tray. And they showed it around. Look, we killed this Baptist preacher. Why, why should we think today that there's things that are going to happen when we decide to party. And we do a lot of it. The, this, the lost generation before the flood was helpless. Now, I'm not going all the way back there. I, I, could, I could have preached a message on the helpless before the flood. Because they, they did not know. Him, but he, used, he mentions it here in this text. He mentioned here in this text, he said, drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall the end, the coming of the Son of Man be. Oh, it scares me. That scares me that he's going to slip up on people. When they're out there partying, they think they're doing something that's just pleasurable, as old uh, Festus would say. It's pleasurable. When they're doing something pleasurable and then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. What about it? What's happening? What's wrong? It, it all comes down and breaks loose. What's wrong? What is it? Why didn't somebody tell me? Well, somebody's telling you today that it's going to happen. You might say, well, why didn't somebody tell me? They're telling you today. There's someone who's telling you today, and they're warning you today. But you're going to find yourself in a helpless condition if you're not careful. Just as all lost people will not be able to do anything at the great white throne of judgment, if you die in your sins, you're going to hell. Whether lost or saved, or, or, or think they're saved, you will not be able to do anything about the Lord's judgment in those days. You say, well, I'm saved, and... And I'm going to stand before the, uh, the uh, judgment seat of Christ. There's going to be terror there. I don't know what it's going to be like, but there's going to be terror there. I know. I know there's going to be terror there because the Apostle Paul said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That's what I'm trying to do today. I'm trying to persuade you today that you need to be more faithful. You need to be more faithful to the Lord. You need to be doing what the Lord would have you to do. I know you enjoy these things, and I'm going to be bringing something out here in just a minute that's, 
that's going to hit you hard, hit everybody hard, even me. Jesus warned, Therefore be also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh, verse 44. Always be ready. Always be ready. Don't let you, don't let you people draw you away from what you need to be thinking about, what you need to be saying. Don't let people draw you away. They'll do it. They'll do it on the telephone. They'll do it on Facebook. They'll do it everywhere. They'll try to draw you away from what you've been trying to do. And they're set there to do that very thing. But believe me, they are. You may think they're the most wonderful people ever was, but they, they, they're going to draw you away from the thinking that you have. If we're to understand helpless humanity, we must see who is faithful and wise. Who is faithful and wise? Verse 45 of our text says, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his house, has household to give them meat in due season. Who's faithful and wise? Doing their duty is what they're supposed to do. That's the faithful and wise. That's the people who watch out after. That's the people, the men who watch out after their own family. In the spiritual sense. Women who watch out after their own children in a spiritual sense. These are the ones. That these, these are those. A servant is expected to be good, a good steward of the things of the Lord. That's one thing. A servant expects, you know, whatever a good steward, you'll say my money used to be a good steward. And I'm going to say this. Everything a child of God has belongs to the Lord. Nothing you have belongs to you. You say, oh, my money belongs to me. No, it don't. It belongs to the Lord. And let me tell you something. If, you, if, you keep, if you're not good stewards of the money the Lord gives you, he'll take it away from you. I, but believe me, he'll take it away from you. I'm warning you today. I'm telling you today. You've got financial troubles. You're going to have them if you've shunned the Lord during your lifetime. Especially if you say you're saved, you're going to do it. Everything a child of God has belongs to the Lord. It never belongs to us who are saved. Nothing we have belongs to us. It all belongs to the Lord, every bit of it. You'll say, well, someday I'm going to get a beautiful crown. You're going to give it right back to him. It's not going to be yours. It's not going to be yours to keep. You're going to lay it back at his feet. And, and any reward, any reward that you get when you stand, when, when you get there, if you make it there, any reward you get, you're going to lay it back at his feet. You're not going to keep it because it doesn't belong to you. Because nothing we have belongs to us. It is not a good steward who seeks to live his or her godly life in front of, I'm sorry, is it not, let me get this right now, is it not a good steward who seeks to live his or her life, her godly life in front of their household, especially their children? That's a godly steward who says, well, if I do this, my children are going to see me do it. That's like I was told a story one time about a man up in Rock Castle County, Kentucky. He committed suicide. All the family was gathered around at the table, and he told, sh he told his family, his children, he said, I want all of you all to go upstairs. This is a true story. I want all of you, I want all of you to, children to go upstairs. And he told his oldest son, he said, I want you to go in there and get me a knife before you go upstairs, get me a knife and bring it to me. And he did. He sat right there at the dinner table and cut his own throat. Committed suicide. He didn't want his children to see that. Well, how many things do we do today that it had been better off our children hadn't seen it? Had, hadn't seen us do it. 
it is not, it, 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 is it not a bad steward? Is it not a bad steward when men and women put other things above the service of the Lord and then make such statements concerning the pleasures of this world? This is the most wonderful day of my life. How many times have I seen that on Facebook? People galloping around on the beach. Most wonderful day of my life. How have, have, have many have I seen them at, 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 at a reunion? Now, folks, I'm going to tell you, I'm, 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 I'm just a righteous preacher. That's all I can say. I've seen them at reunions. Said, this most wonderful day of my life, I got all my family together. What about when you were saved? Do you totally forget about what it should be the most wonderful day in your life? It should be the day that the Lord saved your unworthy, wretched soul. I know it is mine. You'll never hear me say another day is the most wonderful day in my life. Because the most wonderful day in my life is when the Lord saved this wretched sinner. You better be careful what you say. Don't get to partying and forget where you are and what you're doing. What he said is going to be like that, in the, like it was in the days of Noah. It's going to be just exactly like that in the last days. The flood came up on those people. Let me tell you, that flood of, of the judgment of God is going to come up on you before you may realize it. If you've got another wonderful day out there, then, then when the day you were saved, then there's something wrong with you. What about the day the Lord saved you? Man, woman, and child. Was that not the most wonderful day of life? I don't know what's wrong with this modern generation of quote-unquote Christians. What's wrong with them? Let me reread verse 45 again to you. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made him ruler over his house? Oh, to give him meat in due season. Who is that faithful and wise servant? It's that servant that is doing, busy at what the Lord would have him do. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I know I was asked, Storm is gonna have her baby at our hospital. John and Leela's granddaughter. And John, told, John asked me up there, he said, if you can come up, would you come? I said, you let me know and I'll be there. I told him, I said, I'm, I'm at that hospital quite often. You've got to be doing what the Lord would have you do. The Lord called me to pastor Landmark Baptist Church, and that's what I'm going to do. You know, people have this idea, let somebody else do it. I'm about finished here. Now, if we're to understand helpless humanity, we must see what a servant of the Lord must do all the time. I'm going to read verses 46 through 51, and then I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to let you go this morning. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall here begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink, that is to party with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he, when he, looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him the portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth I didn't say that Christ said that don't go out here and say well brother Paul said this Christ said that it's amazing to me you can read something out of the Bible and somebody say well brother Paul said this no, Jesus said this. 
great warning. Now, let's all stand, if you would, and let's be dismissed at this time. And I'll pick it up later on.